and very smart, Bobby. Look, when I'm dressed like that, Bobby, people say to me, are you in court this morning? It looks like you might have a very important meeting today. No, I'm in court this morning. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I asked. Okay, <laughs> dementia and Alzheimer's disease, are, as he moves on, dementia and Alzheimer's disease are huge threats to one's financial situation in the US and generally cannot even get private insurance coverage. I don't know if you caught the tail end of that conversation I was having with Doc. I mean, do you... Do, there's a, there seems to be a sort of inevitability, doesn't there, about, uh, you know, public, private health care. Um, I don't know what it's like, you know, in Ireland, where you're from. I've got a sense of what it's like in the UK, a very unique system in the UK. Um, do you think all roads lead ultimately to the commercialization of medicine? And is that going to happen in Portugal in the future? Yeah, I've had personal experience from the other side of it with, with the um, private health insurance. And I would tell you, it's dangerous. Uh, really? In the well, I didn't realize at the time. So um, when, for example, when I was first found out that I, I had a possible cancer, they'd done everything to prove it wasn't, which took them two years because they were paying for it. I didn't know that. So for when it came down to the end of it, the one, I had one test to do that was four and a half thousand euros if I paid for it myself. But it took them two years to get me to that point. Yikes. So here, take this tablets for six weeks to see how you get on. See what that clear it up. And try this if that doesn't work and try this if this doesn't work and what i found out at the end of it was i had uh, eventually when i just sort of pushed it through a bit like doc now he has a lot more information well, he's obviously a doctor i didn't but i was after reading everything there was to read i was after going through everything there was to go through and i pushed then myself um with regards to i got involved in taking care of my own health rather than leave it in the hands of somebody else but um what i eventually found out was that and this was from the doctors there that They've got no choice, but, and this was in the private healthcare, was to sort of put, do this first before they'll pay for this test. And what I found out was when I had got to the point where I had to pay for the test, I'd used up all of my appointments in my thing, and I ended up paying for the test anyway. Good but heavens, which you could have had years earlier. And when I then decided that, which was in my policy, that if, for example, like outside of, of Portugal to have the care if, if I decided, um, and that I had to call them to tell them, and I got some call centre and some young lady on the other end of the phone telling me, no, you can't go. And I said, I'm not asking permission. I'm telling you, I'm going. And this is what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. um, it took a long time, but I actually had to go fight them to get uh, part of the money back. And it's, it had become, and I don't want to turn people off of health insurance because like, and I will put it down to this, it's fine if you break your arm, it's fine if you break your leg, uh, or if you have something that you want to get questions on. But when it comes to the serious stuff, such as if it's heart or cancer or something like that, um, the, health, health company, the health insurance companies will probably try to rule out everything else first that's cheaper rather than send you to the one that will definitively answer your question because it costs more and it comes down to cost and that's fact mm -hmm. well thank you for that for your your personal insight on that what a horrible experience to have gone through but yeah it, it's not a smooth path by any means is it and 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 you think you know would you agree with me that to overall it's heading in that sort of more commercialized direction where people um sadly uh, we'll be having to think about money first uh, and then care second which seems to be characterized how it is in the united states you know i don't know if you've you've gone to the states lately but if you go to the states every second ad if not every ad on the, on the tv ever uh, advertisement is for this medical thing or just medicine that will cure something that you've never heard of and they're making people paranoid and then it'll have this big long sort of really quick denial it may cause death and may cause this and may cause that the end of it but yes. yet fda have approved it and that's sort of the selling point but if you look at um, what the fda have approved it with the oxy and so on in, in the us yeah. Yeah, yeah. up to date and with the with the, with the crisis that created it's it's a business basically and i think actually everyone should watch that um, program that's on netflix to oh, yeah. uh, how to approve uh, medications and so on and so forth and we are of the trusting type that we the doctor says it or if the lawyer says it or the person says it it used to be if the priest says it etc that that that's that was gospel and that's what you know he, he knows more than i do uh, my advice to everybody is and i know don't become a google doctor as in go yes. google everything and so on but look at other people's experiences go on on them um, um, and if you you can you can actually ring up other doctors and get a second get a second third fourth and fifth opinion yeah. And um, 
what I done actually, I started interviewing the doctors and I went oh, to one yes. of the cancer places in, in Portugal. Then the guy already had his head in his hands and he was already completely stressed. And I sat down and I said, are you okay? <laughs> to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, he apologized. I said, I'm terrible sorry. I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, snowed under here. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? He hadn't read the file. And, and went to another, another very well-known hospital for, for two years, um, as I said, with the um, urologist. And, and I know they say a lot of people, but every time I went in, the only thing he remembered was my name. He had to go back and read the full file every time or even had to remind them of certain things that they had done and go oh yeah that's right that's right that's right so there was that feeling of um a separation between um what you would have had which you say like uh, what we grew up with but that the doctor knew you knew everything about you and so on and so forth so it's a it's a numbers game it's basically um as many people as can get in and it's fees 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 that's it fees 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 and as soon as you're, uh, and what's your policy? I thought I had a very good policy. And my policy was sold to me by my bank manager. And um, when I actually eventually got to the insurance, because there's no one you actually can walk in. With the cover I have, there was no office I could walk in and say, I'm sorry, but can I speak to somebody? No, right. you have to phone this number, tip two for this, tip three for that. Eventually, someone who doesn't care or doesn't want to know what you're doing fill in the form and you have to go online you have an app and all this kind of stuff and for people um, and i think actually what they're trying to do is try to wear you down that just go fill up i had to go for a, a test not too long ago and it was i think it was 75 euros or something like that i can't remember what it was um but i didn't even bother to ask for the the cover i just paid it uh, because the hassle that's because what they said was this hospital doesn't cover your your policy but you can get reimbursed you know yeah. they, make, they made it such a hassle to get reimbursed um i don't do it anymore and i don't mean to to sort of down all insurance policies etc because it has come in um into, into effect to where like say bring your kids to the hospital whatever it is uh, for <laughs> i have one guy who likes to jump off things so it comes in handy there but um, but re but really sincerely, if you have a serious problem, I would say to you, um, get a second or third opinion, but but outside the private sector, because uh, uh, go to the local as well. Um, I ended up going to Bordeaux uh, for the care there, and I went back. But I actually had uh, my radiation treatment I had it done in Portugal, but uh, the actual surgery I had in Bordeaux. Um, and that's because I had researched where was the best places to go. And even the, when I'd done the radiation treatment, for me, what I had to do is I had to check um, with, with the difference. And the, every, every hospital had a different way they were going to do it. It's amazing, isn't it? Thank you, Bobby, for sharing so much of this information with us. You know, I, I think it's, it's a classic situation we're finding out here, isn't it? You, know, you scratch the surface and, you, and it's not all as, as you might imagine. And still... In a very mess messy situation, it looks like Portugal is doing better than most countries and it be better than maybe where you came from, but it's still a mess. It's still a mess in some of these areas where there's too much demand, um, it's over-commercialized, and people are taking things for granted. And as you say, you've got to do <laughs> – it's, it's a classic phrase from, from um, conspiracy theorists now, though, isn't it? But you've got to do your own research. Yes, you have. Um I learned it the hard way, and any advice I give to anybody from now is that get many opinions, not yeah. one or two. Don't you know, get a second opinion, get three and get four, get five, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and it's, it, they don't all go to the same school, and you'll find that everyone has a different opinion and a different um, process. And what you have to decide, who do you trust? Who do you actually has your best interest at heart and, and actually has, has the history and the understanding to be able to answer the questions that you're asking? And the... I would say the interest as well. A lot of the time, it's just textbook, textbook, textbook. And what I actually found was carers, not doctors. That's what I want for. I wanted someone who cared for 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 me uh, 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 in the in the way that they were dealing with someone from their family. And that's what I found. That is amazing. Uh, morning, all. Thanks for sharing. Looking into choosing an insurance now. Well, don't let us put you off there. I mean, instead of doing less research, do more research. That's the thing, isn't it? And I think. It's very interesting what you said, Bobby, and, and thanks again for, for, for sharing so personally with this and, and, and coming out with such brilliant advice on the matter. 
you make a really good analogy. And Stephen is saying here, I never trust what the priest says, but everyone used to, didn't they? There was a time where the priest had that sort of power in society that doctors arguably had in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And maybe teachers. it's where, it, and, and teachers, all of these, all of these people um, who you would want to go to for a quick answer about something. And that's what we want to do as human beings, isn't it? We want a quick answer. It's a bit like, you know, with your, with your spiritual religious side, I need a quick answer. Well, just do some Hail Marys and that'll sort it out. You know, and go, you know, go to the doctor. Well, just, just take these and it'll be fine. Go to the teacher. Just read this book and it'll be fine. We're, we're, we're over that now, aren't we? We're moving into an age of a more conscious, elevated human being that needs to do a little bit more than just that. I think um, trust doesn't come automatically anymore um, from every sector. In society i think it has to be earned and i think it has you could start off with a certain level but you don't have complete and utter and shouldn't until it's proven because people are individuals and they're all different so yeah, right. you can have one teacher I, I for example in school i had a teacher in second and third class and what is your grades um probably second or third grade i don't know but um he was amazing absolutely amazing guy he used to tell us stories every day to be like good absolutely brilliant but went from him into a monster a guy who used to beat the living lights out of us if you yes. like uh, yes. because he was he was a psychopath the guy was an absolute psychopath yeah. and to go from that to that and two of them are teachers um and everyone who went through that with that guy had been scarred by him for for, for life because he was such a violent man and every teacher in the actual school knew he was but was afraid to say anything to him yeah you know that kind of so so it it I think people now, and if you went home and told your mother that you got a slap off the teeth, well, you probably deserved it. What did you do yep. wrong? Yep. Such I, was, I didn't uh, even tell my mum. I didn't even tell my mum yeah. when I got caned. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. exactly. Now your kid comes home and tells you the teacher said something. You're in, why? What did, you, what did she do? You know? <laughs> so it's now, a, I think people, and rightly so, have to question authority or people who put themselves in the place of authority um, in, every, in every field. In every well, field. Well said, well said, absolutely. And what you find with that process is not the a, a sort of dreaded nihilism or nihilism or a cancellation of everybody, but you actually oh. find out who you find out who really cares, don't you? As you? I mean, that's the word you use, wasn't it? There are still professionals, if you look hard enough, in all of For these sure. areas. Who do care. And it's our job to find them, isn't it? It's our job as, as responsible individuals to find those people. Absolutely. And and doctors don't become doctors because they just want to make money. I think they're carers first. Yeah. It's what they become and what they're made later. And it, it really comes down to their strength of character and so on later on and how they want to run their own practice or whatever it is. Like I've got the utmost respect for doctors. Yes. Um, I want to go through uh, to get where they are. But I also understand that they're working in a commercial market that demands certain things from them that allows that or disallows them to provide the service to their clients that they would like their patients that they would like to um and i pro i think that crosses lots of fields including our own as well where people are are being pushed all the time from a sales point of view or from whatever point of view it's a numbers point of view to perform 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 and by trying to push people to perform they're not able to to give the service if you know what i mean well said. It's in every area of modern life. Yeah, I mean, maybe it characterizes the times we're living in. What a fantastic conversation. Um, I think you should be rewarded with some dad jokes for that. No. Is that a reward? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Landing in Funchal was a lot worse before they extended the runway. Uh, uh, Ocean Dweller of Eva says, I can attest that it's all true, that Madeira, Madeira is great. Uh, landing in Funchal was the only flight I'd been on outside of Africa where the passengers applauded <laughs> the successful landing. That's fantastic. On on uh, insurance, generally, the first line of defense with the private health care is to deny the client coverage. Yeah, that's that's the commercial model at work, isn't it? Well, let's save money. Let's say no, uh, first of all. I think Big Vape, perhaps, was the documentary you were talking about. It's a real eye-opener. Uh, morning all. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the Purdue story about OxyContin that, on Netflix as yeah. well. Oh, it's outrageous to that one yeah morning all thanks for sharing looking into choosing an insurance now morning to you eliane um and let, this begins the dad jokes but actually I, we got to just uh, quickly if, if it's all right with you bobby i don't know if this sounds like a good deal to you but a, a bit of currency news and then some dad jokes is that is that, <laughs> is that to your liking? 
<laughs> currency wise still good levels for selling us dollars and buying euros says sarah who couldn't be here but sent this report we've done data out of the eurozone that showed the largest drop in business actually oh, sorry in business activity in 10 years once the pandemic period is excluded well a contraction in the euro area in quarter three is likely which shows that they could enter into a technical recession end of the year uh, we will be monitoring the situation in israel closely especially any involvement by the usa as mentioned before things like natural disasters pandemics war etc can have a great impact on the exchange rate so spartan effects are all over that exchange rates can be very volatile she says we see a lot of customers taking advantage of the rates when they are good from buying large amounts to buying smaller amounts, e.g. 20, 30% of what they need over time when they see positive movements. Who doesn't like a positive movement first thing in the morning, which can be over a period of months or in the same month. This way, it spreads their risk. And if the rate moves against them, the average rate is often still better. Well said, Sarah. Spartan FX can talk you through your options and hold euros on account, even if you haven't got a euro bank account. Uh, that's from Sarah. Hope she uh, improves this morning. Health-wise, I mean, not as a person or as an individual. And we'll see her for lunchtime. Those promised dad jokes for you, Bobby. You, he didn't suddenly make have a medical emergency and leave the screen. Thank you for sticking around for these, Bobby. You know you love to share these with your kids. There's one of these that is a re is really good that I think you'll love to share with your boys. Um, first up, <laughs> you lean forward, Bobby, in anticipation. I always put a brown paper bag over my mouth, my mouth to calm a panic attack. <laughs> the bottle of vodka inside helps too. <laughs> which is how you do it in the States, right? Be sure to read the fine print before selling your soul to the devil. Sounds like medical insurance again. Yeah. There's, no, <laughs> there's no way to opt out of his emails. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tito. And this made me laugh out loud earlier. I don't know if it's your sense of humor as well, Bobby. When I see people running to catch my elevator, and you can try this. if you're, uh, if you're, I think you're going to an important meeting today. If it's in a tower block with a lift, as you get out, <laughs> As you see people running towards your lift, shout out, hurry, you got to smell this. <laughs> I love that, Bobby. Been amazing talking to you. You're all over the place, haven't you, emotionally, ups and downs. Do you have a final word to share with everybody? Uh, no, have a good day. <laughs> have a great day. Yep, that's excellent. Cheers, Bobby. You too. Equal man, bon dia to you. I look forward to seeing you soon. The man with the legendary beef wellington. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks, everybody.